I mean, I just love this verse for so many reasons, but um, your heart and your mind, it's both. It's not just one. Yeah. So yeah, you can, you can internalize anxiety in your heart. You know, you think about it and then it, it eternal internally kind of becomes you kind of what we just said is like, Oh, I'm just an anxious person. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you've taken your thoughts and now you internalize them. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Biblically Centered Podcast. Hello. My name is Johnny Jordan. This is my lovely wife, Danica. Well, she already said hello. She said hello before I introduced her. So <laughs> I know. Sorry. But just say hello I got again. Nice. Hello. There we go. Sorry, I jumped. If this is your first time, we appreciate it. We are right in the middle of the alphabet going through our yeah. um, family virtues. We cover 26 different virtues that we've developed and implement in our family to help teach biblical truth to our kiddos. Yep. Uh, we've learned a lot along the way as well. Yes. Um, so this podcast is simply just a conversation of us exploring those uh, virtues and digging a little deeper on them. So thank you for being here. Today we are on Virtue M. But before that, I'm actually going to say our mission statement this week. Normally Danica does it. Um, I guess a little behind the scenes peek is our printer is acting up. It's on the fritz. Um, we don't know why, but it's printing everything wonky. So typically I have my notes in front of me digitally. Danica prints hers out, but the printing out portion did not work. So <laughs> some of her notes are a little sketchy. So, <laughs> um, But anyways, so here at Biblically Centered, uh, Biblically Centered equips your family with knowledge and conversations for you to live and defend your Christian faith. Yes. And like I said, today we're on Virtue M, um, which do you want me to say that or would you like to say it? Um, oh, I guess I, I can say it. Sure. Uh, virtue M, we maintain peace, letting the spirit lead our hearts and minds. Um, so if you're unsure about who the spirit is or what he's doing, you can go back to our second podcast, Virtue B. Um, that's where we talk about the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So spirit is capitalized. That's who we're talking about helping us with this virtue today. Right. Um, and I will also give our definition. We, um, love definitions here at Biblically Centered to make sure that we're all on the same page knowing what we're talking about. So peace means quiet, undisturbed, not agitated with passion. How do you feel about that? So it's okay to be agitated, just not with passion. That's what I took away from that. (laughs) Oh, he's agitated with passion. You guys stay clear. (laughs) Um, but if we also want to go a little bit deeper, um, the Hebrew meaning of the word peace, which is shalom, um, peace back then in Hebrew, um, peace was a richer word, which that's one of the reasons why we go over definitions. We Mm -hmm. use, um, um, I start with the original 1828, um, dictionary, Mm -hmm. um, because they're just a lot of our words had a lot richer meaning. They Go find some dissolved. big words um, and then read them in the 1828 dictionary and then read them in our current dictionary. And you'll be like, wow, these words don't quite have the same meaning as they did. Yes. Which I just looked them up online, but I did buy, I have a third edition dictionary, which I found mm-hmm. a few months ago. I was very psyched. Um, but like in that, the definition for love, half of it contains God. Yeah, it all points back to God's love. God's love. And what that means. Giving, him, giving his son and everything. And, and then the like, modern one is more of just like a... A feeling. A fuzzy feeling yeah. kind of take so, on it. So, yeah. Anyways. Feeling that's strongly. That's what I love. Yeah. Um, so, if we go all the way back to Hebrew, peace was a richer word. It wasn't just about the absence of conflict, but it also implied a positive blessing. So, it wasn't just about being peaceful, kind of what we just said, quiet, undisturbed. It was also viewed in um, a positive as well Mm -hmm. as like um, peace is meant to be a blessing on your life if you keep it. Right, and it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I would say this is an important virtue to discuss nowadays. I feel like 
Anxiety is maybe a word I didn't even know about growing up or didn't even have a frame of reference for. And now I feel like anxiety is such a big hot topic. Everyone is anxious about something. Something is making everyone anxious all the time. Mm -hmm. And so children are growing up kind of pre-programmed for anxiety, which is really, really sad. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just an important you to keep in front of us and to help our children learn what true peace is and how to maintain it and how to almost enforce it in their life as a default um, instead of kind of drift into what society kind of is programming us for. Right. Yeah. I mean, in the, and it's very clear when it says do not be anxious about anything because I know that um, it's almost commonplace now to identify with your anxiety Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that there's plenty of things that happen that can happen um, maybe things that have already happened that can create anxiety and I understand that you know a lot of people really really battle with that Mm -hmm. Um, but on the flip side of that I've also seen a lot of people really find solace in their anxiety And they kind of put it on as like a, like, well, I'm just an anxious person. It's just what I am. I just think there's, you know, for me on, on a spiritual level, there's just something that I just feel like that is, uh, detrimental to taking anxiety on as your identity. Yeah. Um, and it's not to mask it, but I just think there's such a power in the words that we say and just to, um, kind of flip, flippantly, (laughs) flippantly. Thank you to kind of flippantly just be like, well, I'm just an anxious person. It's like, well, you're, you know, maybe, maybe you battle with it, but that doesn't mean it's your identity. Yeah. And I know, I can't remember who it was, but there's a pastor who I know, and it's, it's such a uh, simple saying, but I just feel like it has more power than what people realize whenever people say stuff like that. He always just says, if you say so. Yeah. And you're, you know, that's just a common phrase when you're like, oh, like maybe the fact that I've taken such measures to associate this with my identity, maybe I'm continually speaking this into longevity because. Right. You're saying that's who you are. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to think of yourself without that. Right. Whereas if you were just like, I'm really battling with anxiety today, mm-hmm. or I'm just having these anxious thoughts today or in this moment. Yeah. Um, and I just love, it tells us what to do. It says in everything by prayer and supplication, which supplication I believe is kind of referring to like thankfulness and how we're, um, uh, God's meeting our needs. So we're letting him know that, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, well, it's bringing your concerns humbly before God. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so it says in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving, let your response be made known to God. Um, and I think sometimes we think, Again, all these things that I feel like society, you know, it's just like, oh, I can do it. I can handle it. I've got it. I can tackle it. I just need more coffee. I need more time. I need this. I need that. And then I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like God made you, created you. He knows what you need. And ultimately, like if you come before him and say, I'm really concerned about this. He is more than able and more than willing to take that Mm -hmm. from you. And to help and to give you peace of mind. Um, I think true peace can only be found in Christ. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see that as we continue going. Um, Which a lot of these virtues are. They're they're rooted in biblical truth. In the God who created. Who is truth. Who created our absolute truth. And so each of these virtues truly can only be found in him. Because he's the one who created them. And so... um, yeah, and then he will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I I, mean, I just love this verse for so many reasons, but um, your heart and your mind, it's both. It's not just one. Yeah. So, yeah, you can you can internalize anxiety in your heart. You know, you think about it and then it, it eternal, internally kind of becomes you kind of what we just said is like, oh, I'm just an anxious person. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you've taken your thoughts and now you've, internalize them yeah um so he he's going to help us guard our hearts and our minds uh but i always view like when it says your hearts and minds i view your mind as your conscious and your heart as your subconscious and 
and just the importance of um like just from a, some of the studying I've done in the past with your your mind and your subconscious mind and how they all kind of work together is like the importance of like your mind is able to distinguish truth um but your subconscious mi- mind is not so your subconscious mind just receives whatever you give it so that's why I think the Bible is so clear about taking your thoughts captive because if you don't take your thoughts captive and you let them implant into your mind, then you're going to start, then you'll feed those thoughts into your subconscious mind. And once they get into your subconscious, your subconscious doesn't have the ability to reject mm-hmm. that information. So it's just going to receive whatever you're telling it as truth. So if you're just constantly telling yourself, I'm just a very whatever person, I'm just, ve- I'm a very this person. You know, that's just who I am. I'm a very anxious person. It's just who I am. It's how I'm wired. Well, your your subconscious mind, your heart is receiving that and yeah. deep seating it. And, and then it becomes your identity because you're just consistently deep seating it. So I just think it's important. And again, I know I feel like I say this every episode. I'm not trying to like paint every situation with the same paintbrush because I do understand there are legit reasons people battle with anxiety. But yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think the scriptures were unaware of that when they said, don't be anxious about anything. Right. Um, so don't feel like your situation is above this scripture and that it's okay for you to feel anxious because right. of what you've been through. Um, but just the importance of if you feel it like, and like in this verse, it says by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving. So you bring everything to God with Thanksgiving. And also when the Bible talks about Thanksgiving, it's not, it's not so much a feeling as it is an action. Yeah. And so it's, it's okay to feel thankful, but the most important thing is that you're giving thanks. So you're speaking thanks to God. Um, and then you make your request known and then he gives you peace. So, um, that was a little bit of a rabbit trail, but no, I really appreciated it. Thank you. Um, Romans fourteen nineteen. Then let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. And so again, like we're not going to try to pursue things that lead us into anxiety. Like if taking on something else or if adding something to your plate is going to result in you being more anxious, then let's not pursue that. Mm -hmm. Like let's make conscious actions for ourselves and for our children to see that, no, we're going to pursue peace in our life. But yeah, to maintain peace, obviously when it comes to people and who you're around, um, sometimes in those situations, it's just better to maintain peace with someone than to maybe pursue being right, I Mm -hmm. guess. Is that what you were trying to say? Well, I think, uh, because specifically in the verse, so Paul is, you know, who wrote this Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are new converts into Christianity and there were a lot of people who really were able to step into the quote unquote freedom in Christ. And then there were a lot of people who struggled with freedom in Christ versus kind of the old covenant laws. And so the point he was making there is for those of you who have the freedom in Christ is to understand that you still carry the responsibility to maintain peace with maybe the people who are struggling. So like an example, I think he says later on or somewhere around there is about like eating red meat or eating meat. Like there are people who are struggling with that concept. And so like if you have the freedom in Christ now to eat meat, but maybe your brother who is a believer, but is still maybe struggling and not sure is to, in order to maintain the peace, like lower yourself to their level. Right. So you know, I don't know how you would necessarily translate that in the modern day, but maybe if you have the freedom and I've talked about alcohol before, it's an easy one, but if you have the freedom in Christ to drink, um, alcohol, but maybe a close friend of yours isn't there or struggling with it or knows it's not beneficial for them. Well, then why don't you just take a back seat and maybe not have a drink yeah. tonight, you know, um, and to support them and where they're at in their faith. Gotcha. Yeah. So to maintain peace, it requires sacrifice. It's not always about, you know, expressing, where you're at with your walk of Christ sometimes to maintain peace. It's about just humbling yourself. No, I like that. I mean, I think obviously what you're saying is don't participate in sin to make anyone at peace, Mm -hmm. but to almost like, okay, if they're convicted of this at this time, I'm going to honor them in their walk with the Lord to help them get further in their walk. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like a very simple example, you know, is like if, um, Maybe you, you feel like you have freedom in Christ. You can, you can watch 
an R-rated movie that has a lot of language in it. Maybe you feel like you're okay doing that. I'm not saying otherwise, but maybe you've, you know, but you have a friend who is like, I just don't really, like rather than, you know, maybe causing an issue and like trying to, you know, guilt them into like, coming oh, you're with fine. you or whatever. It's fine. Yeah. It's honor, a really honor, good movie. Honor them. Right. Um, maintain the peace and, and it, and, it, yeah. and be okay with that. Yeah. And I think that speaks to a lot of levels with, you know, raising kids and sometimes often things that we have to do as parents to try to maintain peace in the home yeah. um, as we teach our kids. No, I think that's really good because I think for, I think for a lot of new believers, I mean, they are struggling to kind of obviously develop that relationship with Christ, trying to figure out, okay, the Holy Spirit, how is he speaking to me? And I think we need to honor those things that I think at the beginning, I think it's very easy and wise to be very regimented Mm -hmm. because like we're renewing our mind to Christ. So we're getting rid of these old things and old habits and not to say that, you know, then years down the road, you're going to be allowed to do everything all over again. That's not what we're saying, but we're just saying, you know, for those new believers, I think it's a very precious time in their walk with the Lord to figure out what he's saying to them and their convictions. Mm -hmm. And so you ought to honor, honor them in, in those. And obviously like our children aren't wise enough to make those decisions on their own either. Mm -hmm. So am I going to let them watch a show with language when they're, you know, eight, nine, 10, probably not. They don't know how to discern that. Yeah. So we're teaching them discernment and, um, we're teaching them, you know, to have those convictions, Mm -hmm. um, in, in their life. And that's getting harder and harder with TV, with kids these days. Oh man. You know, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of, there's just a lot of things on TV that you have to discern as a parent and not, and not just let it be, you know, I just think it's important for parents to be aware. It's sneak. It can be very sneaky. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I have realized lately, like if we're going to watch a show even like the wheel of fortune or something which we love or the price is right or any of these things we normally don't watch them live Mm -hmm. anymore (laughs) yeah because it's like we don't know what's going to happen in the commercials and we would like to not have Have the ability to fast forward or pause or so we um anyways that's a choice that we've made Mm -hmm. which has helped i think kind of facilitate the environment we're trying to maintain Um, all right. This says peace is only understood when conflicts are raging all around. And this is a quote by Joni Erickson Tada. 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 Um, which I think is really interesting because obviously you don't know what true peace is unless you've gone through some sort of of a conflict or Mm -hmm. whether, or if you've experienced life without peace and then now you have peace, you're like, Oh wow, this is actual peace. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think don't be, um, don't be discouraged when you aren't experiencing peace, uh, because you might not experience peace all the time, but in those moments, just think that God, that you will experience his peace and you'll be more appreciative. I think of it after Mm -hmm. you go through conflict yeah and i also think it um like when okay so it says peace is only understood when conflicts are raging all around and so i think you know it's like it's understood whenever there's turmoil around or Mm -hmm. things that aren't perfect going around and i think that's when you can really distinguish the people who have an inner peace and people who, who don't and i know that you know we've heard it you know whatever people believe about the prosperity gospel um you know, there's a quote that's like, God's pos- prosperity is peace. Like that is prosperity is our ability to maintain peace. Right. Yeah. And it's not the fact that because you're in, in the fold of God, so to speak, that you won't ever have situations that occur, um, you know, like bad situations. But the diff- the distinguishing fact is that God promises, pe- promises us peace in those right. situations. And, yeah. and, uh, and that, that's something that distinguishes us from the regular world is because we can, we can face conflict. We can face backlash. We can face hard times. Um, but maintain peace through that. Yeah. Um, which can only be done through Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, God's peace is not 
a magic wand and peace comes when we exercise faith during our trial. It is what gives us strength. And again, I mean, I think some of this, I think maybe in my brain, I can think of peace as something passive, like I'll just experience peace, but that is saying that it comes when we exercise faith. So it's actually us being active on our part. Mm -hmm. So when we're in a conflict or a trial, kind of what you just said, we are actively putting our faith in God, that he is handling our situation, that we are doing everything to the best of our ability while also trusting that he is doing everything in his power. And so that is having faith in a situation is maybe this isn't going how I wanted it to. Maybe it doesn't look like what I thought it was going to, but I know that God is who he says he is. Mm -hmm. God is good. God is working all things together. Like those are truths that you have to continue to put in front of yourself to know that he, he is there. And so it's an active you have to take an active stance. Mm -hmm. You just, you can't just be like, Oh, it's happening. And I'm just going to be really peaceful. Yeah. It's like, no, I am actively saying like, I have faith in this situation and that's why I can have peace. Mm -hmm. Um, which I think is, like I said, it's, it's different. I think than what people normally think peace is. Yep. I agree. Um, and also the importance, like you, exactly what you said with, with faith, um, and that is something that you exercise. So it's, it's an expression. Yeah. It's a muscle. So it's not going to be in every situation. You're going to feel the strongest mm -hmm. like this one. You might get a little more strength and the next one you're going to add on and the next one and the next one. And then you have to maintain that, right? That's how exercise go. If you don't exercise for a while, you're going to have to restart. Mm -hmm. So it's better to be consistent than sporadic. Right. Just like working out, it starts small. So, you know, what is something small today that's in front of you that you can that you can speak out loud faith towards? Okay. Don't just keep it in your mind, but get it out there. Speak it. Yeah. Isaiah 26, 3. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. But again, I know I feel like we've already re reiterated this point earlier on, but just uh, like the importance of us having our eyes fixed on God um, because he's the rock. He's the thing that doesn't move. Yeah. Everything else in our life does move. Yes. Um, and so I think that's why it's so important that um, when it says that uh, God will keep us in perfect peace when we, our mind is stayed on him because we trust in him um, because it's, it's very easy to get distracted by everything going on and, and lose sight of Christ as the rock. And so that's against any turmoil, any um, co conflict, any uncertainty, just the importance of your eyes being fixated on him. So that's all. Yeah. That's all. No, I think that's good. Seems pretty easy, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. And so our mind is stayed on him. If we go back to virtue D, dedication, um, that's about being in God's word and praying. And so... You know, it says our whose mind is stayed on you. And so that's how we prepare our hearts for those times where maybe we're needing peace is we need to make sure that we have been dedicated in those areas. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it can be hard. It can feel like a chore some days, but what we're doing is cultivating our heart to listen and to seek God um, so that when there are times of turmoil, um, it's very easy for us to just communicate with God about that yeah. and for him to give us his peace. You know, if we're not being consistent in those, um, then it's really hard when something happens. It's like, oh, oh no, now I have to fit this into my life so that I can have peace. Like, then it just feels very disjointed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know that we also talk about how our ability to let the spirit lead us, mm -hmm. um, lead our hearts and minds. And so like, I just, I'm going to think of the best way to ex explain this, but, um, I guess just the importance of like when our eyes are fixated on Jesus and he has our gaze and we're trusting him, 
um, you know, he will lead us in ways that might be unexpected. Yeah. He'll lead your heart and he'll lead your mind. Um, and, you know, I feel like whenever we get our eyes off of Jesus and our eyes are focused on our current situation, whatever your bank account says, um, whatever your current professional status is, um, that our decisions can start being dictated by, by those things. Right. And that's where a lot of um, strife and anxiety can come is because you're making decisions based on your circumstance versus where God is actually leading you. And yeah. so, but whenever you are, your eyes are fixed on Jesus and you feel the impression that he is calling you or leading you into a different direction, the, there's peace that will come along with that. Right. And then when you have that peace of Christ, like that's what, that's what we follow. Yeah. As Christians, um, even when in the moment it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Right. Um, so for you, if you are listening or watching this and you, and you truly feel that God has called you or is calling you into a specific area, um, whatever it may be, big or small. Um, and I'm sure I've made this point before, but just the importance of allowing your eyes to be fixed on Christ because that peace that he is giving you in that situation is going to be what sustains you through, um, adjusting to whatever it is he's leading you to, if that makes sense. But don't, don't allow your current circumstance, your current situation, your current needs, your current desires to be what makes you make a decision. Let it be the peace that Christ brings that, um, leads you into your decision making. So, yeah. Um, no, that's really good. And I'll just bring up another point because kind of this grouping of virtues we're on right now are very much attitude, like internal sort of virtues. Um, and sometimes those are hard to express to our to other people, let alone like our children. Um, but it's very important if you're able to find opportunities to talk to them about what that is, what it feels like how God is helping you in those areas. So, um, you know, with peace, just say like, you know, you can explain to your children, this is, I'm maybe feeling stressful or unsure, or we're not really sure what's going to happen in this moment, but we trust God and we have faith that he will work this out and that he's leading us. And so we feel peace, you know, like, Sure, a three-year-old might not really understand that, but because you continue to express these things, they're going to kind of know your internal processing, which will help them be able to understand those concepts, I think, better as they grow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, again, I we've mentioned it um, before in other episodes, but that's why we've developed these 26 virtues. You can go through them twice a year specifically, but you're layering them. So, you know, maybe in this half of the year, your kid could care less about peace, but then maybe next year they find it applicable to their life. And then Mm -hmm. you're building and building and sort of layering these concepts. Um, Because I, I, I think it's important for children to know what peace is, what it feels like. um, Because, if they don't understand it now, it might be harder for them to kind of figure it out later. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because if you've never experienced true peace, it's really hard or un- it can be unnerving too, yeah. I think, for people. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that was good. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to end on John fourteen twenty seven. Let's do it. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Yeah, so if you're in a circumstance or something going on in your life where you feel anxiety or anxiousness and it is rising, um, just maybe meditate on that verse and just let God speak to you that he will give you peace And even though it might feel unnerving to feel peaceful, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, you can have faith. um, Like we talked about in the last episode with patient, you can have faith that he is working 
in your circumstance, even though it might take patience, Mm -hmm. even though it might take um, diligence on your part, um, but we can trust in his peace that he will work it all out for his glory. Yep. I was having a conversation with a friend this morning, got coffee with a friend of mine, and um, we were kind of having a small conversation around calling and um but again like we've reiterated this whole episode like when god calls you to something he will provide peace with it and i also believe that whenever you are called to something you're going to have crossroad moments where you're going to think to yourself did i really hear from god yeah did he actually say this is this actually what i'm supposed to be doing because you know the clock's ticking and things aren't working the way I thought they were going to. Um, but it's just, that's why it's just so important that when God gives you that piece of where he's leading you is to, um, really believe the calling that he's called you to. Yeah. And then understand that it will require change. It will require sacrifice. It will require compromise but it's all for the joy of what it is that God is wanting to do through you. Um, So all that to say is um, like when God calls you to something, just write it down, get it on paper, make it plain um, and and continue to trust God through the process. Cause I promise you every, every area that God leads you to, there's going, you're just because he's leading you in a direction doesn't mean you're not going to face opposition that you're not going to face walls. And oftentimes I think it almost guarantees you're going to face those things. Yeah. Um, but our prayer is that the peace that he gives you and the strength and the faith that you have in God is what it is, what you will be able to take through those walls and yeah. knock them down instead <laughs> of hitting them and bouncing off. Yeah. And I think that applies to anyone, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if God's called you to something, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to require some stuff and it's not going to be easy, but he's going to give you peace through that. And I think if you're going through something and you don't have peace about it, like get out. Mm -hmm. Why would you, if you don't have peace about it, you should peace out. Yeah. Connect that dot. There we go. (laughs) Cool. Solid work. (laughs) Um, yeah, thank you. I think this, I think this little grouping of um, virtues about exemplifying Christ uh, have been some of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Is this the last one? Yes, in this grouping. Next week we move on to, I think, how we conduct ourselves. Ooh. I know. Nice. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be a little bit of a different, because um, they're maybe a little more like, what I said about these are a little more internal and the next ones are a little more outward. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I mean, each, each one is important and again, scripturally backed up and important mm-hmm. for our life. Love it. Well, thank you guys for listening. Yes. Uh, stay tuned. Like we mentioned last episode, we got some fun stuff coming up. Um, our daily kids podcast is going to be coming soon. So we will kind of be pushing that here in the next week or two. Yeah. Um, But thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.